Hey everyone, this is David Brown with the migration update for May 2nd, 2024 from the Braddock Bay Hawkwatch. Kim and I started the day at Ontario Beach Park and the Charlotte Pier for a beautiful sunrise. Here we have a merlin that was cruising around trying to grab birds off of the pier. Notice the dark streaking underneath and the pointed wingtips. Here we have a group of shorebirds that was out over the lake off the end of the pier. The two on the left we see are a little bit larger and they have some black here on the belly. So these are Dunlin. The smaller ones on the right are some kind of peeps, which are small sandpipers, probably least sandpipers, but could also be semi-palmated sandpipers. Here's a group of red-breasted mergansers that had really nice light on them from that rising sun. From the pier, we had a total of 37 species. Next, we made a brief stop at the Braddock Bay West Spit. And I think the bird of the morning was blue jay. We pulled in and had massive flocks of blue jays. I don't even know how to count them. Hundreds or even thousands of blue jays in the air at the same time. Really incredible spectacle that we see this time of year as large groups of blue jays are migrating along the lake shore. And as we went to leave, this adult cooper's hawk was flying around and acting territorial. At the West Spit, we had 43 species. Next, we headed over to Braddock Bay Park to start the hawk watch around 8 a.m. And it was a beautiful sunny morning with a little bit of cloud cover throughout the day. Those clouds pretty much disappeared, leaving us with blue skies of death. Winds were moderate from the west for most of the morning and then shifting around more to the northwest for the afternoon. But backtracking a little bit, as we were leaving the west spit, I was seeing a couple turkey vultures get up. And then as I was driving the road out of there, I was noticing a bunch of turkey vultures in the trees and a couple of them flying down low, moving around. Well, by the time we got over to Braddock Bay Park and looked back over towards the west spit, there was a huge group of turkey vultures soaring. And here's a picture of part of that group. I don't know how many were in the air, 100, 200, 300, something like that. And so even before getting up on the platform, I was just trying to grab all my stuff real quick and get to a spot where I could start counting all of these turkey vultures. And ahead of all the vultures, there was also a group of seven bald eagles. So it was immediately obvious that it was going to be a crazy morning. Here's another look at that group of turkey vultures. And the turkey vulture flight today rivaled any of the peak days that we were seeing a month ago. The flight mostly consisted of turkey vultures, bald eagles, and sharp-shinned hawks, but we had some other nice birds mixed in. Here we have a large dark raptor with a white patch in each wing and a white base to the tail with a relatively small head. This is an immature golden eagle. Here we have a small butio with somewhat pointed wings, overall pretty pale, no dark trailing edge to the wings, just some brown markings on the underside. This is a juvenile broad-winged hawk. And we had a really big flight of broadwinged hawks yesterday, but today we only had just around 50. So I don't know if the flight line was somewhere else and the winds were keeping them away from the lakeshore, or if they all went through yesterday and there were none left to fill in behind. But very low day for broadwings considering the big flight that we had overall. We had some nice songbirds today as well. Here we have a finch with a very pointy bill, and we see some yellow highlights on the wings. This is a pine siskin. And taking a look at the underside of a pine siskin, they have a lot of streaking. Here we have another golden eagle. This one has less white in the wings. And on this one, we can see the golden nape, which is the back of the neck, which is where the species gets the name golden. Here we have a fly catcher that's mostly dark on top and white underneath with a thick black bill and a white tip to the tail. This is an eastern kingbird. Here we have a large butio. We see a belly band and dark patagial bars, making this a red-tailed hawk. But we do not have a dark trailing edge to the wings and no red tail, making this a juvenile red-tailed hawk. And the juveniles just look paler overall. They don't have that dark trailing edge that gives the wings of the adult a nice bold outline to it. Here we have the local adult Cooper's hawk chasing a turkey vulture, which is its favorite thing to do. Here we have another Cooper's hawk. Note the long tail and the long wings held out straight and relatively large head. Now on this bird you see more brown teardrop streaking making this a juvenile Cooper's hawk. Here's a hawk with a long tail and long somewhat narrow wings that are somewhat pointed near the tip and an owl-like facial disc. This is a northern harrier and we see it has very little streaking on the upper breast and unmarked patagials making this a juvenile northern harrier. And towards the end of the day, we had a nice look at this bald eagle that's getting close to adult plumage. Not quite there yet. You can still see some dark on the tip of the tail and some white scattered throughout the underside, but 
probably another year or so and this bird will look like a full adult. And a non-bird species of note today is the red admiral. And we've been noticing over the past few weeks that there's a lot of these around, but today there were hundreds and hundreds of them, it seemed. So I don't remember that phenomenon from past years, so I don't know if there's a difference this year, but tons of red admirals around today. From the Hawkwatch today, we had 67 species. Altogether today, I had a total of 86 species. And after the past couple days of getting seven or eight new species each day, there were no new species for the season today. Taking a look at the hawk count report for our migrant raptor totals, today we had 1,908 turkey vultures, three osprey, 108 bald eagles, our first triple-digit bald eagle day of the season, 13 northern harriers, 89 sharp-shinned hawks, one cooper's hawk, 58 broad-winged hawks, 49 red-tailed hawks, two rough-legged hawks, three golden eagles, four American kestrels for a total of 2,238 migrating raptors. That brings the May total to 4,519 and the season total to 57,122. Taking a look at the forecast for tomorrow, it's looking partly cloudy and then cloudy with the high in the mid-60s. Winds east shifting northeast at 10 to 15 miles per hour, so it's a little bit difficult to predict. Sometimes we do well on those easterly winds, and those kind of winds are a headwind for the birds, so it tends to keep them low and slow, sometimes giving us good looks. If the winds shift more around to the northeast, especially in the afternoon, that may push any flight line away from the lakeshore and might be a bit slower after that. So hard to say for sure. We've certainly had a lot of raptors the past few days and sometimes on unpredictable winds. For Saturday, we're looking at considerable cloudiness with occasional rain showers, a high in the low to mid 60s, and winds southeast at 10 to 15 miles per hour. So they're decent winds. That's just going to depend on how gloomy and rainy it ends up being. And even if there's some rain, uh, we certainly saw last weekend that the hawks were willing to push through, getting a big flight of sharpies the one day and then the next day, even getting a lot of broad wings pushing through. So we'll keep an eye and see what they're calling for with the rain. And Sunday is looking very similar, considerable cloudiness with occasional rain showers, high around 66, and winds south at 10 to 15 miles per hour. So again, it's a good southerly wind, and even if it's not great for raptors, if we end up with too much rain holding back a raptor flight, sometimes these southerly winds and rain in May can be good for non-raptors. Sometimes these are the time of year you get weird things knocked down, shorebirds, ibis flocks, who knows what. So even if it's not good for a raptor flight, it should still be a really good day to get out birding and see what is knocked down by the rain. All right, another great day of birding. We kind of switched it up by going to the pier this morning and hoping for some shorebirds or something. That didn't really pay off with anything new, but it was still a beautiful morning to be out there. Got over to the West Spit and got a little bit of that song birding in, but only had a short visit there, and I never really scratched the itch for warblers. And then we had to rush over to the Hawk Watch to start the count at 8 a.m. as that huge vulture flight picked up. So I think tomorrow I'm going to try to get out and find some warblers and hopefully some more first-of-season species. And I hope you're able to get out birding soon and perhaps visit us out at the Braddock Bay Hawk Watch. From Lyco Birds, this is David Brown. Thanks for watching.